Hello, everyone. All Sorry right. for being late. We're trying to fix some technical issues. And, yeah, it was um, a week of technical issues. My lord, it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you heard now to last night, but the Vancouver guys, uh, they started their stream and the screen was just black. Mm. You could hear them, but there was no no video. Oh, and, my God. Uh, and then today we were doing a dry run for Sharp Knives Rock and just endless technical camera issues and and <laughs> we just had several several issues on our end so it's it's been a week happy friday everyone happy friday everyone but don't worry we're following the rules i know there was some some shenanigans i think uh there were some emails between chris armitage and and mr yusuk uh and and don't worry things have been taken care of now and i are following the rules um i wore a much less colorful shirt than owen's apron so hopefully it won't it won't break the internet um uh, but the, the the appropriate parties have been punished uh hopefully those those technical technical problem gremlins have been hunted down and exterminated and we won't have any more technical issues next week <laughs> hopefully fingers crossed so how's it going now Toe? good good it was the we did a little bit dry run for the sharp knife rock and i'm pretty excited about the show itself and also you know, for those of you who don't know, we did the uh, we have some cool videos uh, ready for that particular show, which I haven't watched. And Nathan here, he he's watched both of them. But I I'm pretty excited about these two new videos that we we yeah. have. Yeah, it's we we've been having a lot of fun uh, at Nightwear making videos. Like it's been a blast over the past year making videos for for you folks but in the last few weeks we've been really like ramping it up and and making some really really crazy stuff um obviously uh, as probably all of you know if you're a regular viewer um sharp knives rock is the show that we're launching next week monday excuse me monday april 19th at 3 p.m uh and it's gonna be a little more of a talk show format less of the disorganized mess that our shows are and more of uh, uh kevin likes to say it's gonna be like top gear uh, if you've ever seen that, but just, we've got our three hosts, Nauto, Kevin, and Chris Lord. Um, we've got videos that we're going to be showing like upcoming stuff primarily. So challenges like knife sharpening challenges and just some weird kind of art film stuff that the guys in Vancouver made. Uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. So we, we did a dry run of that today. First episode airs Monday, so make sure you catch that uh, live at three or, or tune in later. But we'll have a we'll have an after show too, where everybody can tune in and ask questions. Yeah. Uh, we, got, we got what the iron sharpener, the, the that was that was Nato's idea, <laughs> our sharpening competition. Yep. Yeah, iron sharpener. Because you know, I basically grew up watching the 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 very first uh, Japanese uh, original iron chef, and I just. But it would be fun to uh, do something like that with the sharpening uh, format. So I, I feel the same way. I grew up watching, yeah, watching the old school Iron Chef. Obviously, I watched it dubbed in English, but it was like very, very, I think it is what inspired me to get into cooking professionally. That and, you know, old Jamie Oliver and old Emeril Lagasse were mm -hmm. kind of like very formative to me. So when we got the chance to make an Iron Chef inspired video, I, w I was like, Right away, I was like, "It's gonna look like this, and we're gonna have this music and these." Like, I was—I already had the idea in my head as soon as you said that. Now, so, so, it's—I know you haven't seen the final edit yet, but it's—it's it's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's awesome, awesome. Looking forward to that. Yeah. Well, do you have uh, any other news today, Nathan? Or I've got a couple bits. Um, so there's some confusion in the comments about rules and and all the <laughs> all of the the conspiracies. Yeah, there's been there's been some some technical gremlins. I don't know if those technical gremlins are uh, are, are Kevin and Chris pulling wires and and messing things up behind the scene. Uh, I don't know, but but don't worry, Chris Armitage has us on track. Yusuk, I'm sorry we ruined your fried chicken and beer night last night, um, but hopefully hopefully today's show will be better and less of a mess. Um, so beyond the show that we've got coming up next week, as you probably know, the Knife Work Garage Sale happens in May. That's the 17th to the 24th. Uh, we're bringing in all sorts of unusual, one-of-a-kind kind of Japanese knives and even often some sharpening stones and other gear. So we'll be doing a lot of live shows around that kind of part of May, kind of the week leading up to and the week of. We'll have 
uh, yeah, like four live streams that week and a couple more, a couple extras uh, the week of the garage sale too. Um, beyond that, next week on Japanese Knife 101, uh, it's kind of a special episode. They're doing um, kitchen kit, I guess, chef's roll show and tell. So they've got uh, Mr. Tarek, who is a local chef in Ottawa at Gong Fu Bao. Uh, and he's going to come on and show off his knives, but he's also going to talk about kind of life in the restaurant world right now because it's, it's pretty tough right now for restaurants. And so on top of that, we're actually doing um, free knife sharpening in all cities, all Calgary, Edmonton, Ottawa, and Vancouver for any local chefs whose restaurants have been shut down. Bring your knives down. Bring like a couple at a time because we're it's getting pretty busy. A lot of chefs need their, their knives done. But we'll put a good edge on it for you uh, and we'll, we'll turn it around as fast as we can. And then feel free to bring a couple more when you when you pick up your, your two knives there. Yeah. Um, Yusik is excited says uh we love the uh uh we love those early iron chef shows yeah it's i think you'll be impressed i i uh, myself and the editor jeevan put together the intro yesterday and scored some music to it and did some fun graphics and it's honestly it's it's a good homage to iron chef we, we really took it and ran with it like now now to call me and i was at the grocery store and uh and he's like he's like oh i want to do iron iron chef but with sharpening knives and i immediately was like yep got it i know exactly how that's gonna look i'm gonna buy some yellow peppers for you to bite into in the intro yeah we, we got it yeah so, so what are we what are we talking about today now so well today the uh we're gonna talk about very basic a uh, we call it kasumi finish but kasumi polish knives and i will take an advantage of actually using the uh, one of those one of our uh, new line of knives called the um, um, Sakai O um, Sumi line. This is the knife that the uh, we, uh, this knife maker, myself, and uh, we uh, kind of work together to come up with the um, come up with this uh, finish and the uh, knife itself. Um, white carbon steel with the um, forged by uh, Yoshikazu Tanaka-san, sharpened by Maruyama-san. Tadataka Maruyama-san from the Osakai. He's only been working as a uh, knife sharpener for about four or five years, but he's very talented. His uh, tall bevel and the very thin grind is uh, very signature of his. Uh, I do got myself a uh, 240 millimeters Gudo, and I have been using it every day. It's, it's such a great workhorse, um, and it patinas it very beautifully. Beautifully, and um, it, it keeps the edge really nice and long as well. Uh, we have this bunka today. Um, that's long story short. Um, customer didn't you know, like it. Um, we don't usually take um, knives that's for um, that's being used, but he sent it back. So it's got a chip on the heel. It's got a chip on the tip. For those of you who's watching, uh, we the technical issues we had was the our second camera was the cat picking up all the sounds that making that the uh, my my voice sounds like a um, you know like Robert. So uh, we decided to just do a, a switch over when I uh, when we do the um, so for those of you who's watching, what as soon as I start sharpening knives, the camera will turn here. So don't worry, you get a close shot of a um of the knife soon okay but the um so i'm going to basically what i'm going to do is to well fix the chips first it's pretty minor so it's not going to take that long then i'm going to start to thin the knife uh, making trying to see if this knife how how this knife has been sharpened the uh one of the things is that the uh, sometimes you know if it's like super flat grind if it's tiny bit of um, a convex grind or it has a uh, quite a bit of a uh, concave grind uh, this looks pretty flat to me but see how what it reacts with this uh, stone right here okay is it is this the first time you've sharpened one of these uh yeah. sumis yeah it's very one of the very newest knives that we carry so uh you know my knife is like as, kind of as brand new so I don't need to sharpen them so it's a good opportunity for us to actually examine how the bevel is like. Okay. All right. All right. So let's change the camera here. 
Sorry, this here. Can you see it? For, for those of you that have never been into Naoko's uh, sharpening station there, it's, it's a, a bit like a mad scientist li uh, laboratory. <laughs> it's uh, There's just a million projects happening all at once. Uh, it's organized, but in a, in a chaotic sort of way. There you go. Good. Fantastic, Naoko. Oh. I've got the uh, the Shatton 220 stone right here. I will just going to sharpen them at the quite high angle to just remove the chips out first. And so this is the, uh, the Tumi series is a collaboration between us and uh, and Osakai, correct? The, um, yeah, I, I, I would say so. The, uh, when I approached them to have, I was going to just order the knives that they had, and they probably felt a little bit comfortable talking to me in Japanese in the emails. And they're like, they're one of the, one of the slow, like, not say a slow, but one of the last ones to come into um, a kitchen knife world, I guess, right? There's like super traditional people, traditional guys like uh, Sakai Takayuki. Uh, there are people like uh, Jiko. There are people like um, other, you know, wholesalers and very famous names in Sakai that's been doing it for a couple of generations where um, all Sakai, uh, the company has been around for a little while, but the, uh, Getting into the kitchen knife making, it was pretty new to them. So um, they're 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 always looking for a new ideas and such. So the at that time, like when I when I was talking to them, this crochi now you see lots of uh, black dark finish, uh, crochi finish knife mm -hmm. from that particular region. Um, there are only a few that I knew that were making crochi knives at that time. So I was like, you know what, Kuro Uchi, not the Kuro Zome, which is the uh, stain, stain. There are like quite a bit differences, Kuro Uchi, as it's pretty rough right here. Yeah. And Kuro Zome, usually, or well, it's this, it's called black stain, has a little bit more. Um, they have a polished or they have grind mark here, and it looks like it's been kind of, um, um, it's been painted kind of look. And oh, the shinogi is a lot cleaner or a lot straighter. Those were uh, we call it kurozome. I wanted to do a more traditional kuro uchi, so um, so I was like, how about kuro uchi? But not just a kuro uchi, because the uh, you know Sakai, what's really good at what they're good at is the uh, the beveling or the um, polishing and stuff. So I, I asked them, say, why don't you just polish the spine? Pretty nice. And like just polish right here, the choil. So oh, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah it's comfortable to cut with, right? Kurochi has not been a popular in Sakai because uh, Sakai knives are really, really popular in, among the uh, professional chefs in Japan. And professional chefs in Japan were never used to use the, this black finish knives. Uh, they 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 had the idea of the black or dark associate with the uh, dirtiness. Right. So um, they never liked the black finish. Uh, so but I think similar to how you don't see a lot of patinas on like knives well, in restaurants, right? They keep on polishing it. Yeah. They keep polishing it. But the uh, I thought it's cool and also. What I like, especially about the Kuro Uchi, this part has not, never touched the uh, sharpening stones, right? Right. What this tells you is that how this knife, so the taper, so it's got a little bit thick right here at where the handle is, and tapers grinds down towards the tip. This taper is not done by grinding. It is forged awesome right so this gradual taper is the uh, indication and evidence of the uh, the skill of the blacksmith himself Some yeah, that, that's, that's no easy thing right like that's no. easy that in like 
guys from Manaka San, and I think you, I remember you saying Moritaka, but really like kind of specifically talented blacksmiths. It's it's a regional thing as well. The often they make the uh, tan thick, and it's got a lot more steeper uh, taper, yep. or something like a um, something like a, it's almost like the same thickness through throughout the blade kind of stuff. But the uh, as far as I know, Tanaka-san, there are a few blocks within that region that does it very, very good. Um, mm -hmm. In uh, it's a guy. All right. So um, before we just um, answer, I, I see a lot of comments. I think coming in. What I'm going to do here is this is Kensho 1000 uh, Itadaki series. Really hard. Um, really hard. Um, uh, vitrified stone. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to do a few strokes on this guy. And because I just chew this, and because it's hard, it's super flat stone, what this stone tells me is that how flat this bevel is. It's actually pretty flat but i think it's just gonna if i wait a little bit yeah see here it, it. <laughs> the autofocus on these things are are a little fussy so let's here, try to bring the camera back a little bit too yeah so here. yeah you can see that grinding section there here have touched on the stone so as the last edge right here it does have tiny bit of concave, concave in it by putting flat on the bevel here, okay? Yeah. So this tells me the condition of the knife itself. So like this. Yeah, because you, you kind of do like a, almost like reconnaissance when you start sharpening a knife, right? Like you just don't jump on the stones and get sharpening. You no. spend a lot of time kind of learning about it and evaluating it. Yeah, exactly. Especially this, I'm, I'm taking advantage today, especially to see how this is constructed as well. So here, especially at the tip, it's, this tip is very nice. You see this dark spot left here? This is the part that's like a little concave. But this part here is really nice and flat that touched on the stone really nicely. You see here? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to test the back side as well. Um, Can I pop a few comments in? Do that. So really simple question from uh, Bian Katesh on Facebook just asks, can I buy it? I think the answer um, is that, yes. Yeah, we, do we still have this? Yeah, we should. Yeah, that's the. I'll, I'll pull up a link in the sec, in a sec and pop it in the comments. But that's the Old Sakai Sumi series. Yeah. And that's the Bunka, correct? This is Bunka, yeah. And this one that Nauta's working on right now, we were going to sell that at the spring garage sale. Uh, this particular yeah, but this particular one. But if you wanted to buy it, um, just shoot us an email. Uh, at nauto at knifeware.com and we will sell it to you. So this here on the back side it has a little bit more convex concave city. Concave is it con con concave. Concavity. <laughs> concavity. It's a cavity, yes. Concavity right here. It's not as bad, but it, as you can see, this spot is flat and this spot is flat. The whole middle part is um, does not touch on the stone. So I'm just going to answer one one thing. Uh, you said, uh, well, Blanc Blanc was uh, saying time for a finger stone. Uh, not yet, because I did remove a bit of um, steel from the tip and the heel. In order to do that, I did was sharpening at quite high angle. So I still need to thin uh, quite a bit, a little bit more mm. at least. Yeah, so, uh, you, you'd be putting the cart in front of the horse there a little bit. So that, I suppose that answers uh, uh, Dr. Blank's question there. So repair day, maybe some thinning then? Yes, yes. So I repair it and I thin it. But before I thin, I wanted to check how 
because this is my first time sharpening this particular line of knives. I wanted to check how concave or convex or flat of this edge was. Right? Mm. Makes sense. Mm. It's it's a nerdy hour. Today's a real nerdy hour. Okay. Well, well, the whole point is you can you can tune in, you can ask your most crazy in-depth knife sharpening questions and unlike chris and kevin will give you a, a real answer <laughs> so here i'm going back to a 220 grit this is the uh so after i checked it with the 1000 and see where it touches i'm going back down to 220. the reason is that 220 is not the best checking stone because the uh Often those grains and those the uh, what you call it the slurry will come out, and that will touches on the uh, those low mm. convex convex so polished polish parts of the knife that aren't actually touching the stone. Exactly. So checking first is the the best best thing I, I yeah best thing you can do. Now, so there, I I've I've been. A I've often called you the the sharpening wizard, and I stand by that statement because the approach that you take to some of these things is, is so smart. Well, I, I learned it from the uh, some people too, so <laughs> I can't take all the uh, all the credit. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna gonna pop some questions in here uh, while, you're, while you're thinning out a little bit. Uh, uh, Chris Chris Armitage says uh, it's nice of you just to start on time. Don't forget that I'm watching. You know what? You know what, Mr. Armitage, we're playing by the rules. We're, we're being good boys. I, I'm just drinking ginger ale, I swear. Um, we've got uh, got one from Craig's Kitchen Rocks, our buddy out in the East Coast, says, hey, Nathan, that Helle Morgan arrived this week. My wife loves it. It's a beautiful knife. Um, Hel Craig and I had a similar situation where we we really wanted this new limited edition Helle knife that, that came out, um, but we didn't necessarily need another outdoor knife and both of our spouses said that they wanted it and that was kind of a loophole for us to buy it oh. Ray, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad your wife likes that knife let us know what uh what she ends up doing with it are you guys going camping soon or is it going to be used more in the kitchen I'm, I'm very curious it's a stunning knife it's got yellow leather in the handle if anybody wants one uh head to our sister site kent of or uh or i'll pop a link in the comments there I never get that the uh, that spouse saying I need another knife kind of stuff. I, I I married an enabler. We're always talking about the next axe and the next. I I, <laughs> I said I wanted to get a clay chucker for for clay shooting. They're like, yeah, totally. We should get we should get all that stuff. It's awful. Um, blank blank says I had no idea that Olsakai just started out with kitchen knives. It's cool that they finally made the jump over. So mm -hmm. move right. It's relatively new, right? The uh, they they've carried the kitchen knives that were made by the different uh, different people. Uh, Mariyama-san, they they wanted to make their own brand by having the Mariyama-san as a resident sharpener. That was the very recent, like uh, four or five years ago. So before that, they had the knives that you know had an O on it, but it was you know produced by someone else. Gotcha. So, which is often the case in Sakai, right? Yeah. What What did they make beforehand? Well, the uh, they are they are actually specialized in the gardening tools. Cool. So they they do sell a lot of gardening gardening tools. I, now I I've been I've been growing my herb garden. I, now I now I feel like I need some gardening tools from Old Sakai. Yeah. Okay. Craig Kitchen Rock says, uh, "Polished spine and choil is really nice touch on a knife." Uh, Craig, if you feel that way, you should tune in on Monday so you can catch Iron Sharpener because uh, <laughs> Mr. Ken in the sharpening competition. Let's just say he was very focused on getting a polished spine. Yeah, we got some folks saying Happy Friday. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. As always, Happy Friday. Uh, if you haven't yet. We would love if you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, it's it's real easy. You just got to click the button. And if you like the video, uh, well, that'll be awesome. We would appreciate that. As Yusik likes to say, it helps the algorithm. I yeah. don't know what that means, but uh, I I believe it's an important thing. Yeah. We've got the uh, quite good uh, new videos came in. Like the, uh, I really love that the Mike's uh, new uh, Nakiri video. Mm. And that inspired me so much. And every time, like I come up with something, the ideas, I 
like the Iron Chef, Iron Iron uh, Sharpener thing, I immediately pick up my phone and call called Nathan. And um, this, as as soon as I w watch the uh, Mike's new video about Nakiri, I'm like, I want to cut something. I want to show off my <laughs> skills. I want to show off my like Julianning skills. And told him that I want to make um, my my recipe of Japanese a uh, call. Well, Asian coleslaw, let's put it this way. And also Japanese um, shredded um, uh, salad, the cabbage salad with the sesame dressing. Yeah, not, not everybody knows this, but if you've ever been to a knifeware barbecue party or if you follow uh, if you follow Naruto on Instagram, um, Naruto's an incredible cook. He makes really, really good food. And anytime I get to eat that food, I'm I'm pretty happy. So that's enough of a motivation for me to <laughs> me to take you over to Mike's house and, and shoot some of these videos. But yeah, I think we should do some more some more cooking videos. If you haven't watched uh, Mike's Nakiri knife skills video, there's some really great, you know, just basic techniques with Nakiri's in it. And we're gonna be doing more kind of cooking slash knife skills videos where you know we, we kind of get a little more into the actual application of using these knives and and what they're good for in your kitchen. Yeah. Um, so somebody, uh, Mike Poor just tuned in and mm -hmm. just asked, uh, sorry, joining late. What stone is he using at the moment? This one here is the um, uh, Shapton Glass 220 grit. Uh, it's a great stone to grind at the uh, bevel down. Uh, I use this one to uh, remove the chips out off as well. <laughs> It's pretty thin, but the, it's, uh, it retains the flatness quite nice, long as well. Mm. Four, 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 two twenty grit. <laughs> right on. Yeah, that's that's an important thing when you're you know thinning out a knife. Some of those, like I love my knife for two twenty stone, but I find that I am flattening it, you know, quite a bit when I'm thinning out a knife. Yes. So here. I made the um, this bevel nice and even, and the backside I haven't okay. touched this one yet, so you can see where that the low spots are, right? Yeah. So what I'm going to do is just going to work on the, the second side. Come on. But. Speaking of uh, stones that stay flat and flattening them, Mike Blank asks, Nauto, do you flatten your stones with each knife? I actually tend to flatten maybe once a day if I've had a long day. Maybe I should start flattening more often. Yeah, you should. <laughs> the, um, really depends. The, if I'm doing all grinding, especially the reason why I just fit, uh, threw this stone here is that this side has a lot more con concavity. concavity. New word to me. Concavity in the back, right? So flatter the stones, the better, because it touches on the, the spot a lot easier. Gotcha. Right? Um, yeah. I'm just going to say, like, it depends on what you're sharpening. I mean, it, you know, if, if you've got, I know, Blank Blank has a small sharpening business. If you're sharpening maybe just a ton of ankles and stuff, it may not matter quite as much. But, yeah, it's definitely, like, ounce of prevention is worth a pound of care, as they say, especially when it comes to, like, thinning nine, nice that flat stone. Yeah. And also, the first stone that I used, the uh, Kensho 1000, um, Itadaki 1000 stone, I always, always chew them before I use them. The reason is that the dust stone, I use it as a gauge. I use it as a, to check that knife, what the uh, condition of the knife is. I use it to see the uraoshi. I use to see if the knife is flat. I use that to see where the concavity is and stuff like that, mm. right? So I want that stone to be my gauge, the ruler, I want that to be as exact gauge as possible. Yeah, that right. makes sense. Yeah, you so, can't get a good idea of, of of what you're doing if your measurement tools aren't, you know, exactly. calibrated properly to set, you know. So. Exactly, right? So that that's really the, the 1,000 bit. I chew them, like, 
like over through them. Right. Um, fighting music was saying, but you're going to drop back down uh, on the edge angle before you're done, right? What's that? Well, because you you remove the chips at a very high aggressive angle. Yeah. He's asking, you're gonna are you gonna drop back down uh, on the edge angle before you're done, like on the primary bevel or sorry secondary? Yeah, bevel? Yeah, yeah. Right now I'm thinning, and uh, when I'm sharpening, this is gonna be sharpened at somewhere around like 15 degrees. Are are yeah. you thinning to the point where that blade road disappears? Yeah. Yes. Uh, here's a, a an interesting one. Nato, what do you think of the special grinding from uh, Mitsuaki Takata? I think it's called uh, oh, Super Mario Grinding. Takata Sun's knives are fantastic. They, uh, it's pretty good. Um, he used to work for Ashihamono in Sakai. His, uh, uh, his line called the uh, um, Suiboku is fantastic. I've, I've I've seen his work. He managed to somehow get the what is called the uh, flow line of the uh, forge uh, steel. So you see knives here. The steel here has the uh, line. It's the uh, you when you buy a steel, um, especially at the um, at the workshop or the, you know knife steel comes in super long bar. And you cut it into the sizes and forge it into pieces. I'm just going to actually change the camera really quick. So they come in a long bar like this, and blacksmith cuts into the sizes, and they forge. But knives are directional. You can't make um, – you can't say the bar like this and cut this this way and try to make a knife this way. There is a flow line goes in one direction. Like a grain. Yeah, like a grain. Like a yeah, wood grain kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah so, like how you need the, the grain of an axe handle to run yeah. in line with the edge, not the other way, because then the handle will break easily. Exactly. So knife has a very similar line. Flow line always goes this way. That's really interesting. That is something I did not know. Yeah. And Takara-san, for some somehow, uh, managed to pop that the flow line on top of the knife. It all looks almost like a Damascus steel. It's like it it like looks like a very fine line layers of steel. Mm. He's got a really really good good um, good techniques on that, um, and he's gonna like. I've seen his like several knives on the on the website and uh, as well as Instagram and stuff. He's really really good at making it the really thin. I sometimes think though his knives sometimes expose tiny bit too much of steel for people like us, like you know, knife nerds. Fantastic! It's gonna cut super nice for those who's never really used the Japanese knives before. I feel that the the exposure is little too much that can be too brittle gotcha yeah a little more prone to chipping yeah. kind of like what we talked about in last week's episode which if you haven't seen you should go back and watch it's one of our most i think interesting episodes uh but sharpening knives certain ways for different users and different uses yes yeah. um craig tate rock says uh just responding to the heli knife got some green and maple wood coming our way she wants to use the heli for carving it uh yeah great great choice my partner and i both use we've been carving maple spoons lately uh and, and using the heli for all the rough work until we get down to kind of the, the final shaping um some love for the nikiri video which is good to hear yusuk said <clears throat> he had to use his nikiri the night after he watched the video which is uh, i'm glad to hear uh james dean says greeting from los angeles hello james um interesting question from mike poor um is there anything mixed with your water like an anti-corrosion agent yes the um well that's what the lot of uh, knife makers use the a little um chemical fish thing to put that in the water and if you look at the uh all the knife sharpeners and knife makers uh sharpening water in japan it's yep. like green yellowish color right that's the type of agent that they use 
Uh, we don't use those. Um, we don't use those as the most of the sharpening is done by hand, and we have the towel right next to it. And especially here in Calgary, uh, any prairie provinces or states, um, it's pr super dry, so it just dries up really fast as yep. well. Um, but the uh, one of the reason why the uh, they use those type of liquid is that the uh, they do have to work um, quite a bit of knives at a time at a batch, right? right. Like not like 20 or 30 or 50 sometimes. Mm -hmm. So they, they just basically keep them in that water. Right. That makes sense. One like rough grind, just throw that into the, the water so that it doesn't, you know, start rusting. They don't have to, you know. Yeah. And you're doing one at a time or a few at a time, depending. Yeah. Uh, James Dean says Mike's Nakiri video uh, was great, especially the Mega Nakiri by Moritaka. I was <laughs> convinced to order the Koi. Uh, Moritaka is already in my collection. Yeah, I have the Moritaka Mega Nakiri too. It rocks. It's awesome. And I think the Koi is a good follow up. It's one of our most popular Nakiris. And just watching Mike shred that onion with that knife like it wasn't even there it was pretty awesome. Okay. How are we doing? Pretty nice and thin. I may just gonna stop here for the thickness. Uh, it's pretty thin. I'll show you how it did though. Here, this side, the first side is great. It just really blended in really nicely. Here, the second side, it did really good, except very light. It's kind of hard to show, but this camera is good enough very light color left here i may have to finish with some sort of the uh, stones or very uh, rough mudding uh, stones to finish but let's move on from here okay there's a very interesting comment maybe on uh okay. well here I'll, I'll run through a few here because there's a few good comment uh blank blank says uh tons of pocket knives is, is is what they sharpen at work blank i'm sorry that the guys screwed up in the live stream yesterday because they were supposed to talk about pocket knife sharpening they'll be back next week we um this is a good one uh joshua wa bloomberg asked i noticed that Nanto switched hands when he switched sides is that preferable to flipping the knife over in the same hand when thinning. Comfortable? Um, it needs a little bit of a practice uh, to uh, sharpen on both hands, but the uh, sharpening on both hands will definitely make the uh, look of the knife even. Mm. And, and that's blank blank actually did, who, who is always in the comments helping us answer questions, which is yeah. much appreciated. Gave, gave a very similar explanation. It, it gives a matching finish on both sides, helps keep things symmetrical in my experience. Yeah, if you have the patience to learn how to do it, it's it's definitely worthwhile. Uh, yeah, like I basically, it's easy to start with. I just push down on the bevel and move my, you know, finger. Cause I can, I can do this and just follows it. Yeah. Yeah, if you if you're not trying to like force the knife or do anything crazy, it it mm -hmm. it's very easy. So, um, sorry, I'm just gonna tell. Uh, I just moved to the stone, the Kensho 1000 Itadaki again. The reason why is that after I thin it, I went back to this hard vitrified stone to make this bevel nice and now flat. So it wasn't quite flat enough before from the 220, and this is going to help flatten it further. Yeah, and also it kind of tells you where it's not flat and how it's flat. Uh, this is the great stone to show and see where where it needs to be worked. So this stone is kind of like like a litmus test in a way. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Damon Spector says, when Nauto sharpens your blades, they're able to kill the undead. <laughs> that needs to be on a t-shirt for sure. Yusik, email Chris Armitage about it. Okay, we got we got a big one here. Uh, from Grant Brook, 
glad you can tune in tonight, Grant. I see your comments all the time, but I I, I, uh, I know you're a busy guy, so thanks for tuning in. Um, I bought a secondhand Koishi, and there's noticeably less core steel showing than the pictures of the original knife. By my thinking, it must be thicker behind the edge than the original. As such, I laid it uh, flat on the bevel to thin. But now I'm... Hold up, can't see that. <laughs> Uh, but now I'm thinking this only maintains the existing angle slash thickness to restore something like the original angle slash thickness uh, and reveal a similar amount of core steel as the original. I'm thinking I would need to thin from the Shinogi line to somewhere behind it, but not at the edge. I'm on the right track. Um, when you have the uh, much more core, well, you need to have the core exposed. Um, let me see if I have anything to show today. Uh, it sounds like his knife has been sharpened a few times and the core steel has been brought back a little bit. So if he laid it flat on the bevel and sharpened that, that should thin it out and reveal more core steel, right? Yeah, but if it's too of the convexity going on, though, you have to be a little bit more careful. Um, Grant? If you send some photos mm -hmm. over to Nauto, yeah, he could definitely give you some advice because it's tough for us to troubleshoot if we can't see the knife and can't see what you're doing. But if you send a couple photos, maybe maybe a couple of big ones, and then a few close-ups, if you have a shot down the edge of the knife, um, he should be able to to give you some advice on that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So you're you're thinning and polishing on the uh, Kencho 1000 now, right? Right now. Here. Sorry, folks. I have to change the cameras today, as the you know what you know when I'm sharpening, no one's watching my face, so no, this is fine. I think. That's what you think, Nato. There's a whole group of fans that show up. Oh just my god! Oh. <laughs> the um. But this is good. The um, again, the Kensho stone, as the uh, stone is super flat, it tells, as I kind of said earlier, 220 grit is great enough, and that the uh, as you sharpen them, it takes it digs up all the grains and makes th the mud that works on the lower spot on the knife as well, right? For those of you who's watching, lower spots on the knife is not the bad thing. It just makes the uh, knife a little bit, like too much low spots is not really great. But a little bit of low spot is not a bad, bad thing. Um, so like, you know, I, I like to make this look pretty, so I'm gonna hide those uh, low spots. But like you can see here, I just started working on the back side. The core start to polish it up. So that's a little bit higher up right here. Oh, this is this shows pretty good. You see here, like yeah. Oh wow. Where 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 it's flat? Yeah. Wow. So it's, yeah, it's it's not a bad thing for those of you who's watching. It's I'm just doing this to test where. Gotcha. And lots of knife makers. Uh, the way the reason why you don't see those low spots is that when Sakai they use this um, piece of um, uh, metal that ties this and they use the wood and the, some sharpening polishing powder and they do this way to hide it. Uh, a lot of places they use the uh, sandblast and hide it. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That's speeding, speeding up the process but sacrificing some of the quality. Yeah, but it's not not bad. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do is the same thousand grit, but this is the knife for one thousand. Pretty soft, really soft actually. That blends that the the low spot pretty easy as well. So you're gonna be able to because of all the grit and, and mud it's throwing up, you'll be able to polish some of those sections that aren't quite perfectly flat. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Uh, Craig's Kitchen Rocks is seriously thinking about a Megan Akiri after that video. Yeah, I mean, Craig, 
if you if you need more convincing, send me an email or, or message me on Instagram because uh, I I've owned that Megan and Gary for years, and I recently lent it to a friend, and I very quickly asked for it back because I realized how much I missed it. It is an awesome knife. It's the perfect blend between between a Nikiri and and more of that like tall Chinese cleaver style knife. Uh, Fighting Music says uh, twenty four people watching and only twelve likes. Yeah, come on, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thanks, Music every week. Music is always in the comments reminding people to like. <laughs> appreciate it. Um, I I love this one from Blank Blank. <laughs> my main goal, uh, or man, my goal is to one day be able to buy a stone just for the purpose of checking the condition of a knife. Now it's always flexing on me with that stone. <laughs> it's, uh, I, one of the good things about me working for knife work is that, you know, I get to, I got to go to see the, uh, the Masashi Fujirasa for the knife sharpening and got a whole bunch of skills and uh, knowledge from him, as well as the, the, that Stone Kensho Intellect series was such eye-opener and mind-blowing. The way he thought of it and created, the, invented, and uh, manufactured the stone that he, he basically uses on only several purposes. <laughs> mm. I mean, you can put the koba on it for sure, like the micro bevel on it, but right. <laughs> main purpose was, yeah, like... I, I'm excited for when you can go to Japan again because I think we should uh, we should create some content around that and kind of have a series about what you've learned when you were there and um, uh, maybe you know if, if viewers want to submit questions about sharpening that Naoto can ask some of the some of the folks that he you know hangs out with on his travels I think it'd be really cool. Yeah, like I, I'll bring me my pretty decent laptop and you know with the webcam like this we should be able to actually. Uh, live stream quite a quite a few things. Yeah, yeah, I think we should make it happen. Uh, <clears throat> James Dean, great comment here. Japan has these great blacksmiths and sharpeners, so I've never quite understood why so many people buy a knife and then immediately redo the finish or thin the knife. Sorry, I have to see the, the thing here one second, and I'm just going to hide the chat. Japan has great blacksmiths and sharpeners. I've Never quite understood why so many people buy a knife and then immediately we ah good point. Alrighty, so here's a, here's why. And traditionally in Japan, especially the uh, region uh, so-called Sakai, uh, Sakai knives are um, made to be sharpened. Made to be sharpened. It's very weird, but it's true. Um, oftentimes the koba is shitty. Uh, the micro bevel, the edge is actually not as um, sharp. Um, reason why is that the um, people uh, make those knives for those professionals um, with the um, put for those people who can put their edge on the edge that they like uh, rather than the um, rather than very universal edge. So um, often. Especially in Sakai, they leave the koba very rough and not so as great. That's why there are so many uh, places that they do, they say they do hombazuke. Hombazuke, homba is a, in um, tra direct translation, it's true edge. So there are so many places that offers this true edge sharpening service. But for most people who um, who's only, I guess, used it at home, that edge, the like out-of-box edge is, more, for most people, it's enough, right? Yeah. That is one of the reasons why they, they most, a lot of people do put the edge on uh, right after they buy them. Yeah, that's, that's something we come to time and again. It's, these blacksmiths want the knife to perform really well for average people in their home kitchen, and so they put on an edge that, the average person isn't going to fuck up immediately. And then for those of us that like it, like a super thin laser, then, you know, maybe we tune it up a little bit. Blank blank puts it pretty well. Four words. Depends on the knife. <laughs> for example, Masashi-san's knife, his knives are 
such great it's like out of box sharpness is crazy it holds the edge really nice but he also has the same very similar idea um so that his knives are has a lot more flat spots than the other knife makers the reason why is that the um he has this idea making a carved blade is so much easier than making a super flat blade so he makes the blade from the get-go, super flat. So when the customer or the, when the user wants to make it cu more curved, it's easier. But if the customer wants to retain the flatness, they can. So, but what I, I may be just working on something that's otherwise with Masai Sun. It's a secret, it's secret. Hopefully, <laughs> uh, don't don't uh, don't spill too many secrets. Mr. Kent is watching. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Naoto might have showed me the secret today, and nobody's allowed to see it because it's a big secret. But it, it's a very exciting secret. It's a it's a it's something that I I always had in mind, and just to respect his uh, his skills, and I think to utilize or to maximize his skill level. To show you know what he can do, that that idea I think is really good. So hopefully, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I always laugh at this name. Sorry, uh, Wormy La Worm says uh, I pretty much accepted that my wide bevel knives will look ugly for a long time if I just thin as I go and don't completely flatten out the bevels early. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's what happened with my zero the first time I thinned it, but it got there. Yeah, it's, it's it takes long time as well as you can see. Like I've been doing this like for about a good 30, 40 minutes now. Yeah, I'm walking so. And you're not... fast. If it was me doing this, it would be three hours. <laughs> but I'm trying to make it a little bit more look pretty as well. So. Yeah. We we've got. Uh, <laughs> uh, James Wong said. Uh, I have an OCD of removing low spots. Usually, it takes a long time to do so. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes the um, if you I, I try not to like say sometimes yes. Sometimes I try not to get too deep into removing the low spots, especially knife like this, uh, especially double bevels knife like this, because the if I were to remove all those low spots that you can see on the blade right now. I will make the edge too thin and start to flake off. So I will ha actually have to grind another um, 0 0.5 millimeters down or so. So um, it's um, I agree and I like not to see any low spots, but at the same time, the 0 0.5 millimeters on sharpening is quite a bit of a steel that you are removing as well. So I try to find a happy medium, I guess, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Well, while while uh, while Nato's doing that, I'm going to show off some work for the viewers. This is our buddy James Wang, whose comment we just responded to about having knife sharpening OCD. I think that knife sharpening OCD has never been more evident than in this picture that James refurbished. Uh, I'll pull up the message here. Uh, James said. This is a Sakamaru that he just finished repairing. Uh, it took almost 10 hours to restore it. Uh, removed the chipping, straightened the shinogi, fixed the tip, sanded the uraoshi, mirror polished the entire blade, etched the hamon. Uh, yeah, that yeah. is like, yeah. <laughs> that's insane. Yeah. I, yeah. I could literally never do that myself. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, no many knife makers in Japan are capable either. I mean, they no. probably are, but... <laughs> no. Well, the only yeah. reason why you see a lot of low spots on the even the most expensive knife you find is that, you know, the way that they sharpen. They, they you know, they use the uh, bigger machineries and stuff like that to do. Where yeah. James one, he... I'm sure he takes a lot longer, much like probably much, much longer um, to uh, make that same finish. Right? So... 
Anyways. Yeah. Um, if anybody else has sharpening jobs that they've done that they're proud of, uh, send them send them our way. Email them to me, Nathan at knifeware.com, and we'd love to show them off on the show. We do the show every Friday at 3 p.m. Uh, or sorry, 4 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So uh, we, we'd love to show them. Or if you guys ever want to do like a, a comment and critique kind of corner where Nauto can look at your uh, your your work and kind of give you some constructive criticism and kind of help you improve as a sharpener if you're if you're a bit new. Um, we would we would love to do more of that. Um, Kevin Kent says, please dislike and unsubscribe. Don't forget. Don't forget to dislike and unsubscribe. It's very important. Um, very importantly, uh, coming up on Monday, Monday, April 19th at 3 p.m. Mountain Time, we are premiering the pilot episode of our show, Dark Knives Rock. Uh, we're going to be showing off all sorts of great stuff, uh, having some good chats, uh, showing these this iron sharpener stuff that Nato and I have been talking about so much today. Uh, lots of lots of fun stuff. So subscribe to the channel and tune in then. We would, we would love to see you there. Yeah. Are you on the, the Knife War 1000 there still? I just moved all up to the uh, Knife War 4000. So Knife War 4000. This stone I found actually re works really well for Kasumi finish if you make your bevel nice and flat. A little bit of condition, condition here. Mm -hmm. This I really didn't like this um, stone for Kasumi for a very long time because the uh, it was a little bit too hard. But harder stone works really well with the really fairly flat bevel. Fairly flat. So I made this knife pretty flat, right? As you saw on the uh, 220 grits and the uh, Kensho 1000. Uh, knife for 1000 was to really to get the uh, polish it up, or the, sorry, the fog it up. But this knife for 4000, quite hard, um, what you call it, the uh, magnesia bond stone. They do create lots of deep, uh, thick slurry like this. And if you do it in a little bit of shoulder stroke like this, and just try to work on the whole blade here. I'm gonna have to work a little bit more, but the, um, here. You can see a nice wow. mild, mild look to it. Yeah. Right? Um, it wasn't as attainable, easily attainable before for me, um, probably because I wasn't really spending enough time flattening the bevel itself. Now I flatten my bevel using some of the stones that we have. Also, the uh, I make sure that my stone here is super flat. I get the better results on the Kasumi a little bit easy. And I remember um, when I'm talking to a uh, domestic sales of Naniwa, um, telling me about this particular stone, saying, yeah, those chisel guys and those uh, um, plain guys like this stone to make a nice kasumi on them. And I'm like, yeah, and not make little weird polish on them, but it's not. It's the uh, little bit of technique as well as to basically make this part really nice and uh, even. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Wow, that's gorgeous. Although, you know, there are some spots that's like a little bit like this right here that's you know a little bit lower so there are like pros and cons especially in this back side when i'm working on it i i can see it's not going to get as pretty as the other side because it's got quite a bit low spot so i'll, I'll do something about it uh 
Corey Phillips wants us to do a, a, a nice long live stream sometime about uh, thinning knives. I know we've done a, a couple of videos about that in the past, but I think it's a, a good topic that, that, I mean, there's so much to know about it. We should definitely, uh, definitely talk about that sometime soon. Mm -hmm. um, David Spector's got a good question here. Uh, it says, I have a Negura stone, but I usually <coughs> just raise some mud with the, my diamond plate when I do an initial flattening. Does the Nagura do some magic I don't know about? I assume Damon's referring to a synthetic Nagura stone, which you have right there. Synthetic Nagura stone. Um, so a Nagura stone, but I usually just raise some mud with my diamond plate. When I do an initial flattening, this um, synthetic diamond um, Nagura stones is I, I usually refer to this as a uh, eraser. Uh, when you see that the, uh, not so much on this um, Nitra 4000, but the uh, Kitayama, um, three th uh, Kitayama 8000 or the Nitra, um, oops, yeah, that's pretty dirty. A Nitra Super Stone 3000 that clogs up a little bit easy. Uh, this works uh, pretty good as a uh, sort of like eraser to take all the um, crop, like clog. Um, the natural Nagura does work a little bit different. Natural Nagura and making a mud out of the diamond stone is definitely going to make it like a um, polishing uh, agent to make a nice kasumi or the uh, fogs. Um, either way, it's, it works as a polish agent or like a mud. So it's a little bit different there. See? Because the mud is pretty thick, and the bevel is pretty flat, and tiny bit of uh, low spot will make this knife suck into the uh, blade. <laughs> that makes yeah, it's kind of like stone like it, it wants to stay in place. Yeah, see, like stone moved. Yeah. <laughs> but it's fine. So here, so. This is a very good example of low spots. It's got a nice kasumi here, but uh, pretty big on low spots right here in the, in the middle. Again, I am not going today to remove all the low spots because to take this whole low spots is going to, uh, I'm going to have to remove a whole bunch of, um, what you call it, the uh, um, steel from the edge which makes the like the life of the knife shorter. So, gotcha. Yeah, it's almost like brand new knife, so I don't want to, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> Philip says, uh, <laughs> "Not easy to follow you there, guys. It's one a.m. in Poland, and I hope to <laughs> stop at eleven a.m. Uh, great content as always. Well, thanks, uh, thanks, Philip." Can you share a couple of words about Shapton, Nanawa, and Suahiro, the history of braces? So it's a broad topic, but uh, do you have any basic thoughts? Hmm. Um, Shapton is a relatively new company out of Niigata. Uh, no, sorry, the Saitama. Uh, Saitama? No. Gifu area. No, wait. No. Uh, Ibaraki. Yeah, Ibaraki. Um, they're relatively new guys. Uh, Naniwa has been around for quite some time, I think. The uh, sadatani san right now is a third gen from that particular company. Um, they, they're they not only just making the uh, um, sharpening stones and abrasives, they do, they are big in stones, so they, they create the tombstones as well. Oh, it? really? Yeah, yeah. Huh. It's very interesting. Yeah. Um, Can you sharpen your knife on them? No, they don't have abrasive in it. Oh, that's too bad. But the, uh, they, they've been around for quite a while, and um, they make a lot of stones. They make a lot of stones for a lot of different customers. Mm. And uh, Shapton, they only make it for themselves. The, uh, they don't do any OEMs. There was one stone that I thought uh, was made by Shapton, but it was made by someone else. Mm. And I, I heard it directly from that a person who made it. Like, oh, yeah, that was us. Ah, and Suhiro. 
I have used some of the Suihiro stones. I'm relatively new to the uh, Suihiro stones for myself, so I can't really talk too much about them because I don't know much about them. Oh. Suihiro is out of Niigata area. They are, they have a lot of good stones, it seems like, and they have been creating lots of good um, stone lines and contents. Uh, we, um, I, I found that they are making, uh, what, what you want to call it, the, they're making um, some polishing powder to get the Kasumi back on, not a Kasumi, the, it's more, almost like a um, um, Masakari Kiri finish, which I was working the other day. This is something that you guys had a hard time looking at next, last week. Oh, yeah, there we go. So you can see that the Damascus, right? Yeah, yeah, then yeah, you can see, yeah. So they, they, this is something that I came up with, so it's not uh, perfect. But it's, I think it's pretty good. Um, but they, they came up with the uh, polishing powder that does the job for us. Oh, cool. Yeah. So we're, we're getting some for the, uh, our sharpening purpose pretty soon. Yes. Okay, so next. Um, James is asking, uh, by the way, I noticed Naoto doesn't actually insert the stone into the stone holder. Just curious, why is that? Yeah, I, I was meaning to bug you about that, Naoto. Was that the stone into the stone? The, the stone hole is upside down and you're not actually using it. Oh. To really hold it. <laughs> I guess super lazy, that's it. <laughs> you're I just too the stone holder. I just got a super lazy. All I'm, all I want from the stone holder is to, uh, is to raise up the stone. <laughs> right. To have enough height. So yeah, so you're not smashing your knuckles on the. On the yeah. Table. So that's it. Sorry, because it's easy and it's it's you know it's wet enough and it's uh. Yeah. The holes in the place anyway, so I. <laughs> it does the trick. Why would you ever need to use the stone holder properly? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, James, James likes your response. What are you working on now? This is the Kensho uh, K6000. Um, this responds very well to the uh, stainless clad carbon steel knives like a Koyushi Yuki. And yep. generally works very well to make the uh, really nice Kasumi polish on the carbon steel knives as well. Uh, for those of you who's joined a little bit later on the show, I'm sharpening a uh, kit in the Satai O um, Sumi series, which is the uh, Kurochi, the black finished version of Tanaka san's white number two carbon steel knife. Um, this here, this Kensho K series is fantastic. Because that um, not only the uh, it makes the edge a nice kasumi, you make the kasumi a little bit more pops and shines. The um... mm. hey, sorry, now we're getting a little noise from your mic. Is it touching the table by chance? Maybe. How's that? It was probably. It is not on them. Yeah, that's better. That's better. I think maybe the bass is just getting some vibration. Thanks, oh, man. Yeah. Um, Fighting You Sick emailed me a picture of the knife that he was working on. The uh, uh, Suncraft, yeah. Yeah, and just saying uh, saying in the email, um, the shiny spots are the low spots. Nauto inspired him to go have a go at the knife. Didn't like the mm -hmm. performance, but didn't want to mess up the finish, but performance won. Mm -hmm. Nice to use now. I, I I think it looks pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, the um... and any feedback as to like if you were to work on improving the finish. The the finish actually looks pretty good. 
The um, no, it, it looks really good. The um, I I like to do a lot of experiments with the different stones, uh, but oftentimes sometimes the different stones won't like by sharpening this way, especially on Damascus steel, sometimes won't give the uh, idea of finish as you want. So you know sometimes I I have to collect all those mud here. And to and use the uh, cork, or you you basically keep all the muds on the underneath of the the uh, sharpening bucket, dry them up, and you can use that as a polishing powder as well. Oh, interesting. Or easiest way, grate your stone on it. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it's like a grater. I'm sorry now. So you're talking about sharpening mud and 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 all this gunk that gathers up in the water. I'm pretty sure we have a video coming out soon that kind of has something to do with uh, with sharpening water. Oh yeah, the uh, the sharpening competition, uh, the knife um, iron sharpening uh, iron sharpener, where um, Kevin and Mike will face off each other. Winner will get the air high five because you know it's a COVID era. The loser. We'll have to drink a coffee made from the water that's in the bucket. Yeah, they're going to have to drink sharpening coffee. Uh, and that's on our show that launches next week, Sharp Knives Rock. It's uh, going to air on Monday at 3 p.m. Mountain Time uh, on YouTube right here. So subscribe to the channel and keep your eyes peeled for that. It's going to be a lot of fun, a little different format. Um, it's not going to be a Q&A type show like we normally do. Um, it's going to be just like pure talk show. We're going to have a special couple special guests. Um, we're going to show uh, clips of upcoming videos. We're going to show the iron sharpener. Uh, and then at the end, somebody's going to have to drink coffee made with sharpening grit. Luckily, it's not me because I didn't compete. And luckily, good. it's not me because I'm the judge. <laughs> yeah, you're the, you're the chairman. Yes, I'm the chairman. For those of you who don't know, check that video out. It's coming yeah. up. It's, it'll be... Uh, Hopefully it's fun, and yeah, for those uh, who's watching and haven't subscribed, do it, do it now, and yeah, so that you don't miss the any videos. Yeah, and it helps us get continue to get to do this for work because uh, I'll be honest, I'm kind of selfish, and I I want to keep making YouTube videos at work, <laughs> uh, and so if you support us, we get to keep doing that, and and then we can keep doing these live streams as well. And we we sincerely appreciate it, so thank you all. Um. <clears throat> Corey Phillips uh, was talking about knife thinning there, and it, Corey's tuned in a few times, kind of asking questions about, you know, learning to master some of these, some of these sharpening skills as a relatively new sharpener. Says, I think it could be useful to go over tip thinning too. No one really goes into that in as much detail and provides context like you guys. Well, first of all, thank you. Um, but yeah, you got got any points you'd like to add about thinning the tip of a knife, Nato? The uh, tip thinning is the idea. Uh, oh, there you go. I usually do tip thinning um, have slight different angle from the uh, other parts. Usually, um, I'm going to try see if I can set the uh, camera a little bit different angle here. Okay. So here, a bit closer, and from the top here. Okay, a little bit better maybe. Um, when I'm thinning the um, the the heel part and the middle part. I change switch my finger position a little bit. When I'm thinning a tip here, I'm not actually putting my pressure right here, but a little bit higher up. Mm -hmm. The reason is that the, as the knife, I'm just gonna you come back here. As the knife is made with the, especially the hand force blade, Knife has the thicker piece right here on the tang or where it meets the handle and tapers it down. It gets thinner, right? So in order to keep this shinogi straight, they'll have to sharpen the tip at the lower angle. So I usually and sharpen them. When I'm polishing, I do push, push it down here. But when I'm um, when I'm thinning, I leave my finger a tiny bit higher 
on the blade when I'm thinning. That's that's really one good um, tip for uh, for yeah. thinning. Yeah. A tip tip. Yeah, tip tip. Cool. That's that's really interesting. Um <clears throat> all right, what else have we got here? Thanks for the great questions, everybody. Uh uh da, 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 no, not a question. Um Dave Inspector likes your your water bottle with a hole in it. <laughs> um, Brad Cook asks, "What grit atoma are you using on the four hundred stone or four thousand stone?" I, I only use the uh, the coarse uh, one hundred forty grit, the uh, coarse coarse one. Although I've been using it for quite a while, so that it's not as um, greedy as the brand new one. Often uh, when I we don't have them much here, but I, I usually have the I I usually have two. Diamond plates here, and when the ones start to wear down, but not as like not the baldy spots, I have another one that's more grainier. So I have two that's the um, ones to ground down them much faster, and two that little bit more um, smoother one to uh, finish it up. I don't do it all the time, but I usually have to. We're out of stock of those guys. I have them older. Um, apparently, global demand pushed at the uh, production uh, pretty tight. I was talking to a, one of the suppliers. Uh, Atoma says, yeah, it's, it's, it's tight. <laughs> Anyways, so we're hoping to get them like in a month or so. Oh, yeah, it would be nice to have those back. Yeah, they are really good stones. Okay, so um, I'm, we're almost like done. What I'm gonna do is, uh, as you can see, the, the those spots here and on the both sides, I'm going to actually do not a cheat, but do a little bit of a different um, thing on it. Okay, so um. And Sakai, what they do is that uh, they put on some metal kind of stuff, and they have the metal bar that hides here, and they use some sort of the abrasive powder with the uh, with the polishing compound, or the, with the wood and polishing compound. Today I'm going to use a uh, little finger stone that is a uh, this 1000, and I'm going to finish that with the little bit different uh, type of stones kicking around here. Hmm. To just make it look pretty. It's it's the it's, it's just that um, you don't need them. But. Gotcha. Um, Philip, who was asking earlier about Nanawa and and uh, uh, and Shapton, says, "How about Amakusa Imanishi um, mm -hmm. and Imanishi uh, Ohira stones? Are you finding them useful?" Imanisa is great. The um, I you know we, we actually. We've been dealing with them for quite a while now. Um, they are a, um, they, you might actually own a couple mountains in Kyoto. No big deal. What's that? No big deal, just, you yeah. know, a couple mountains. Yeah, a couple mountains, like the mines, they take, it's a mining, like mining, right? Yeah. So they own a couple mountains for uh, mining, taking those the stones and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. They own Ohira. They are great. Um, Ohira Uchigumori is probably one of the best stone that um, to make the uh, finish really nice. And it, which we had, we were lucky enough. Like last one, we had a few kicking around. Yeah. Ohira is good mountain for a uh, one for kitchen knives as well as a um, as well as. Um, some carpentry tools and um, uh, sword polishing. Again, the Ohira Uchigumori is really famous for a uh, sword polishing. Hmm. Uh, ooh, here's a good question. So, uh, 
Damon Spector's asking about the Knife or Garage sale, which happens in May. It's happening on the 17th to the 24th this year. It says, any exciting single bevel Kiritsuke is coming for the garage sale? Kiritsuke. Oh, they... Yes, there is... Um, yeah, yeah, few, few, few. Keep an eye out. <laughs> there are few, actually. Yes. I can't really tell you, because... <laughs> uh blank blank says don't cut yourself now till i always cut myself polishing oh the something that you could do and that the what the fujara san was doing is he actually recommended me to do this oh smart it, it's similar to how i sharpen axes like from behind the blade so this here both using that the, the the little small finger stone did blend. See, see, you don't see that uh, much space oh, yeah. anymore. Yeah. It blended very nice. So it's huh. this side. I'm gonna actually do some fun stuff here. Um, I did have a small. Finger stone. This is super. So I'm going to do. Hmm. Where do you, uh, where are you busting out here? I am... What's up? Yeah. Oh. I did have some stone that had the here. Little spots. spots. See. It's a little bit big to be called the. Um, it's a little bit big to be called the uh, finger stone, but it, it doesn't work. It's a two finger stone. Yeah, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm just gonna step away for a sec, but I've got a good question here from Wormy the Worm. I've heard that if you finish on a stone that makes a good. Kasumi slash contrast, you don't have to use uh, a good muddy slash contrasting stone at the lower grit uh, to end pretty. How true is that? The finishing on a stone that makes a good contrast, you don't have to put a muddy con Um, Kind of, yes. The uh, What you want to get um, from that the lower grit stone is really to make the bevel really nice and even. Um, you don't really have to have muddy stone again to have a. Um, it really depends on the purpose. The uh, the first stone, a two twenty grit, for example, I use pretty grainy air. It doesn't give much mudding um, finish, and I the main purpose is to grind that down. Second stone I use was the uh, Kensho really hard um, stone there that the. Um, that, uh, that doesn't give as much of the uh, good contrast at that level of stone. But from that um, stone forward, I use that the nice muddy stones to slowly making that the uh, making the bevel a nice, nice kasumi on them. So um, it makes it a little bit easier if, like to use that little bit muddier stone from say, one stone or two earlier for, before that you're um, your finishing stone that may probably makes it a lot easier hmm. hopefully that makes sense yeah yeah that makes sense um james says learn this technique from francis in the vancouver star yeah that makes sense um <clears throat> all right we still got lots of questions here um Oh yeah, uh, Yusik sent. I'm uh, sorry, uh, blank blank sent a, a picture uh, just now. It's the Miyabi after they re-polished it, and it looks pretty awesome. I I wasn't sure which Miyabi it was, but I'll uh, I'll pull this photo up here because it, uh, yeah. it looks pretty awesome. Here we go. So that's that's the Miyabi that uh, the blank blank repolished. Oh, nice. nice. I, 
think it looks pretty good. I, I don't know. I can't see anything wrong with it, honestly. What do you think, Dato? It's like I found I found any of the stainless Damascus ones are actually it's hard to get the uh, get the finish back. So like anyone who's doing that job, that's I admire. It's like I try our best to get the uh, those finished back, and we do have often a little bit better um, equipment, <laughs> mm. right? So we're lucky. So I admire for anyone who's doing that the similar or same job or even like better job than we do it's like yeah yeah this is the the kaizen and vg10 oh the kaizen yeah yeah nice yeah i i admire any any jobs that people do um again i'm i'm lucky enough to be able to kind of use that the that stone like you know with more stone like this and Yeah, nice, nice work. Damon Spector says your cryptic answer has got them excited. I believe that's a reference to the single level cured suitcase for the garage sale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Wormy Worm says uh, thank you, uh, thank you for the um, answers as to the uh, the polishing and, and kind of what what stage you want to polish at. Mm. Um, whew, lots of questions here. Okay. Um. Damon also says, holy smokes, my new Mizaki has such a thin tip. I'm afraid to sharpen it, so I've developed a slight recurvature of the tip. Mm. Yeah, Mizaki-san's <laughs> knives have become such weird. Um, it's great, and it, it it's so distinct now, eh? It's... Mm. Yeah, his knives are super, super cool, but... Would you would you be hesitant to thin it at the tip as well if it's? Yeah, uh, as I as I that technique that I showed you, you know, like the goes thin on the tip and that the thick on the heel. It's it, that's exactly how Mazakistan sharpens his knife. You can actually feel it. You can see his knife. The heel is much more thicker, like this. Yeah, and it's just thins to the towards the tip so um it really is up to you and his knife is also quite a bit has a quite a bit of a convexity as well on that the uh heel part and uh, so as a little bit of tip so um if you feel and his knives great thing about his knives that his knives doesn't have any low spots gotcha yeah, because his knives that the bevel looks pretty coarse. That's uh, how he finishes on the, the stone. Yeah. I so. so. Uh... Uh, GJ Sergiotto, uh, our buddy in Europe, says, uh, hey there, Nauto and Nathan, sending you some love from Europe. Uh, I have a question for Nauto. Last time you said that Shibata will once again send some knives because he picked up production. Can you elaborate, please? When should we expect them? The um, so Kotetsu, uh, we are getting some uh, AS version soon. I got the I got a notification AS, and I've seen lots of his Insta uh, his uh, photos that they're making some some things production, and I see uh -huh. lots of uh, knives like a um, um, Kotetsu, some knives like a. Yeah, some super cool knives. Right on. So what are you on to now? Here. Um, I will that was kind of my finish uh touch on the look here. It looks almost like um I'm just gonna get the clear um rag. Yeah, not a bad idea. Do I have any cleaner rag? It was clean to begin with and just got super dirty. But um, it looks almost like pretty, like a brand new. I may finish it at the um, uch, um, Uchigumori. So it, uh, it doesn't have a glare shine, but it's got a nice uh, nice looking kasumi on it, on both sides. So what I'm going to do is the I'm going to uh, sharpen them, uh, the edge. For those of you who don't really know, 
what the difference between thinning and sharpening. Uh, thinning is really to put the edge, this sharpening, this whole bevel sharpening, I'm putting at the last edge about a little less than a millimeters. This determines how how the edge, um, sometimes, you know, we usually sharpen them around this angle, about probably 15 on both ends. And the uh, if the knife comes super damaged, I sharpen them a lot bigger like this. Um, won't notice that much of the difference actually when it comes to uh, cutting. This is going to be a just regular angle at say 15. Pretty low, but 1000 grit, hard 1000 grit to uh, raise the burr all the way here. Switch again another 15 degrees. Yeah, that's because we shot a chip repair video the other day um, that will, will be out on the YouTube channel in a few weeks. But that was something I noticed was you didn't go down lower than a thousand grit after you thinned the knife out. You just raised a barrel one thousand and carried on from there. Yeah, the uh, one of the reasons why is that the I made sure that the edge is thin enough um, at the at the two twenty level. You know, because the coarser stone to thin is really important to, it, it will determine how thin that knife goes, right? right. Um, so I made sure that the edge is really thin so that when it comes to putting the last edge on, I don't have to go down as coarse as uh, 220. Because 220 stone, 400, any coarse stones will grind a lot of steel off. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. And it'll undo some of the thinning that you've done. Yeah. Okay. Here. Uh, question from Joshua Bloomberg. Uh, is knife we're going to carry slash restock finger stones in the future? If we have the uh, enough stock from that particular manufacturer, when we have that, those uh, um, stones, we are lucky enough that we get – we basically order everything that they had. <laughs> so um, hopefully, yes, I, I would like to. Um, if we are getting some or more in the future, no 100% sure. That's, that's, the, that's the answer. Yeah. Uh, this guy, Kevin, I think his name is. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Mr. Kent, I guess, uh, says, I want to watch a TV show about knives. Do you have any suggestions? N not really. I don't think there's any shows about knives on TV, is there? No, I don't think so. No, but there's going to be one soon. Yeah, hopefully. There's going to be this show called Sharp Knives Rock uh, starting on Monday. Uh, and it's it's not going to be on like TV TV. It's going to be on YouTube TV, which I think is honestly a lot better and uh and is the future. And so we've got a show that is airing live. The pilot goes out Monday, April 13th, uh, sorry, Monday, April 19th at 3 p.m. Mountain Time. And yeah. it's about knives, it's about cooking, it's about sharpening, it's about making people drink coffee that's made with leftover sharpening water because they lost a contest. Um, yeah, it's it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, we've been so working yeah, the, uh, <laughs> yeah, the uh, iron sharpening um, competition, it has already been so competition part has been already sh been shot. Um, so we're gonna air, but the uh, judging part will be happening on Monday, and judging will be done by me by several criteria, and I know Mr. Ken is watching it, so I'm not gonna review the last fourth, but it, it will be judged by four categories. Four, four. One is how how it cuts tomatoes. It is important and vital for the knife to be able to cut the tomatoes in a way that you know I like I do it this way, you know, like without holding a tomato and see how smooth the edge is. Second, I'm going to cut the uh, carrots. Carrot test is fantastic. It will tell you how thin the edge is, and the the way I'm thinking is that the, uh, to be fair, I have two knives and I cut a millimeter, oh, sorry, probably five millimeters 
If it cuts, if it doesn't break, I move on to a centimeter. If it doesn't break, it just kind of do it by the points, right? And third point is obviously the look today. We're kind of focusing on the look part, right? How pretty they are, you know, deep scratches and what, what, how they look like. Yeah, I, I probably don't need to convince anyone watching, but your your knives shouldn't just work well. Your knives should be pretty too. I mean, I, that's, I think so. I, that's I, the reason we've all ended up with all these beautiful Japanese knives. Yeah. Fourth point, fourth category, judging criteria, is a secret. I have not told a competitors yet, and I am not, not going to reveal it today because the uh, he's watching. <laughs> it's it's. I'll tell you, Kevin, it's how well the knife smashes through a two by four. That's that's the trick. That's the secret judging. Yes. Uh, yeah, so if you want to watch Sharp Nose Rock, it's going to be live on Monday at 3 p.m. Mountain Time. Uh, that's Monday, April 19th. And it's going to be fun. We've got some really cool videos to show you guys, including Iron Sharpener. Uh, Sean says, I'm on my break at work right now. I figured I'd drop by and say hi before I catch up later. Long time no see, Sean. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. Uh, if you guys have more questions, keep them coming. I see lots of great stuff in the chat. Too much to respond to everything, but uh, I'm glad you guys are having good discussions. And uh, I mean, that's really what this is all about. Um, oh, quick and easy one here. James Wang. By the way, when is the next garage sale? Really looking forward to it. James, the next garage sale is in May. Starts May 17th at uh, 8 a.m. Mountain Time. And it's, as with last fall, it's going to be primarily online because, uh, well, guess what? There's a pandemic going on. So shop online at knifewear.com is, is what we recommend. We're going to have a lot of really great live streams. We're going to have kind of like teaser streams on, uh, I think, the 11th, uh, kind of all week leading up to the garage sale. We'll be talking about and showing off some of the knives for it. And then... Uh, on the 17th, when the sale starts, we live stream for like eight straight hours answering questions and helping people pick knives. It's, yeah. it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, the, we're going to do a, uh, whatchamacallit, the uh, preview first on uh, the week before. But I know the fact that the uh, some of the knives will be arriving in between the preview and that the uh, first day because um, Japan has this week called Golden Week. Mm. Um, that's a, a beginning of the uh, May, May third, fourth, and fifth, and yep. this uh, this year um, May third is a Monday, so people were taking like five days uh, straight. Um, so a lot of people are coming back to work on uh, six, and some of the uh, like. I some of the things that we want to wait until the very last minute. <laughs> so I know it's going to be at the very, very last minute. It wouldn't but, be enough for garage sale if there wasn't stuff showing up in the warehouse like the morning of. Yeah, it'll be fun though, hey? I'm excited. We we can probably like unpack knives on stream and just sell them right there. Yeah, yeah, that, that's. It's pretty insane. It is. It is our our. It's our favorite. It's my favorite part of the year when it comes to knife wear. Um, I remember my first knife wear garage sale. Uh, I had very long bleached out white hair, and I I hobbled in on a pair of crutches because I had just broken my leg. But I I picked up my first Yanagiba and a uh, single bevel knife that I still use for a lot of chicken butchery, like a little little stubby guy, and I think a copy of Lucky Peach or something like that. Yeah, I I have your picture right here. <laughs> oh yeah, there's some old pictures of me on that wall. <laughs> yeah. Um, Wormy La Worms asking, do you like to put a micro bevel slash koba slash hamiguri on your wide beveled uh, double bevel knives, or just standard 15 degrees on each side like a moment ago? So here is the uh, few different terms goes goes on right here. Okay. Yeah. Koba and micro bevel are the same. Koba means a small edge. White bevel knives like these guys here have the koba at 15 degrees. Hamaguri, on the other hand, it's uh, in Japanese, hamaguri means a clamshell. A clamshell. 
So hamagri means this convex grind. When I'm putting the micro bevel, micro bevel is going to be flat here because I don't change the angle as I do this. Right. Um, there are some knife makers that I know that they put actually secondary micro bevel to these knives. Secondary. I don't, but some people actually do. So when I'm sharpening at this one at 15 degrees right now, right? Some knife makers, especially some guys in Sakai, they like to do the secondary beveling at the lot higher, because I was sharpening at like 15 like this, right? Some knife makers like to actually put it at the last minute, very last minute. So this is my finishing stone, 6,000. At the very last stone, they sometimes put the super micro bevel that is thick. Did you see how, how yeah. big, big the bevel was? Yeah. To make it a little bit more stronger, you won't feel them. If you see this one edge on a micro microscope, you see the 15 degree edge and the 30 edge like that. Uh, it won't change how this cuts the paper. Right? But um, it will make the edge a bit stronger. One of the reasons why you want to put that the, uh, one of the reasons that you may want to put the double bevel on the last edge is that um, cutting board. When you're cutting into the cutting board, the when you're making an edge like this versus at the edge like this, it doesn't cut into the cutting board as deep. You know, these you have that the times that you try to, you know, you're using that knife on the cutting board like this, and you always feel like it's like sticking onto the, the cutting board. Yeah. Uh, by putting that a little bit more thicker bevel at the very end will prevent that from happening. Less. Oh, interesting. Bit. Yeah, but, it makes sense. Um, I don't do it for myself. I just did on this guy. <laughs> but the um, right. But yeah, you 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 don't have to. Um, there's multiple ways that you could do. Um, but standard 15 degrees is something that um, we usually do. Let's put it this way. Yeah. Good? Yeah. That's standard for us. Yeah. Fighting Usex says, um, you guys could sell Nauto and Owen used stuff compilation boxes. I have no mm -hmm. idea what that means, Usex, but if you want to elaborate, <laughs> you might be interested. <laughs> Got him interested. Um, are you going to switch up your camera there, Nato? Or are you still working on the knife? Okay, I'm going to switch back one second here. Sweet. Here. Okay, so just going to finish it up on the leather here. Um, <clears throat> DJ Sergio, another good question here. I have just ordered the Takamura SG2 210 Guto. Hey, good choice. Awesome knife. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with my choice. Initially, I wanted a Shibata, but it's hard to find, so I settled for a Takamura. Can you tell me the main differences between the two? Um, both SG2 versions, thin and lasers with perfect fit and finish. Yeah. The, um, so the reason, one of the reasons, and uh, Shibata-san, he looks up on... The uh, who is it? The uh, he looks up on Takamura now. The way he sharpens, the way he finishes. So ultimate goal, not really goal, but the he tries to make the knife cuts like a Takamura knife. Only the well, biggest difference though is that the uh, Shibata knives, because the Kotetsu he uh, he finished the the side of the knife a little bit more rougher. Uh, it may have a little bit better chance of uh, food falling off a bit easier because it creates a bit more, a bit more air pockets. Yeah. Uh, Which we talked about last week. So if you haven't seen last Friday's episode, go watch it. It's awesome. There's a ton of good information in there. 
Yeah, so that's something that you could definitely think about. But Takamasa is nice. It's fantastic. Um, his out-of-box edge is crazy. I, I don't know how he yeah. does it. Um, yeah, that's so cool. yeah, that's really the biggest difference. Um, I guess like a little bit of profile difference too. The uh, Takamura sounds like more traditional, you know, rocky, uh, yeah. a little bit more. Shibata Kotetsu is a lot more flatter. Yeah, um, Takamura, I would say, is kind of a little, seems a little more like French inspired. Mm -hmm. Like if you hold it up to it like a Sabatier, you would you would see some similarities for sure. Yeah, it's it's a really personal preference at that point. So, um, yeah, yeah. Um, another question here. Keep the questions coming, guys. I mean, we're we're getting near to the end of the show today, but if you got a few more, we got a few more minutes left. Um, blank blank uh, is asking. Speaking of finish on leather, do you ever use diamond products for your straps, Nato? I personally don't. The uh, I I know some people put the diamond paste on the the uh, for me sharpening should have finished at the sharpening stones, and the leather strop is really to take that the tiny burr off from the edge. So I find it there's no um, necessity in terms of a uh, strop in the burr off using the diamond paste. Diamond paste, I use it for just polishing purposes. I do have um, diamond paste that's 12, 20. I can't remember how many, but I do. I mm. do through Amazon, and I do have anything from super coarse to like 0 0.3 micron or something super crazy. Um, yep. And I use that sometimes to polish the uh, polish the knife, but the um, not so much on that. Uh, on the edge part. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> another great comment from DJ Sergi Sergiotto here. I really like this. Uh, we love anytime folks give us ideas for shows. Uh, mm -hmm. Since I have an idea for an educational video that you guys can make, like the top sharpeners slash blacksmiths that you did previously, it's going to be Japanese first. Um, and you can <clears throat> present blacksmiths the pioneer of the craft. For example, Teriyasu Fujiwara invented stainless clad and shiji. Takamura were the first to use SG2 in knife production, etc. Uh, and it would it would you know educate even more. Mm. Certainly, I can. Um, yeah, I can definitely do something like that. Yeah, let's let's, uh, let's give us like about a month or so. You know. Mm. Yeah, yeah we've got, we've got some topics we want to do for you know for for the rest of i guess the second half of april right now yeah. um but we yeah keep the ideas coming um send us a message or, or more importantly so we don't forget send an email to either nauto n-a-o-t-o -O, at knifeware.com or myself i do i apply most of the programming so uh that's nathan at knifeware.com either of us will you know if, if it makes it to our inbox it's more, more likely to actually happen and we'll yeah. uh, we'll add it to our our schedule so to speak yeah but yeah, he says he gives us one week. <laughs> um, all right, yeah, I mean, great, great comment. Um, blank blank's hoping for another Japanese natural stone episode, which I think would be good to do. I actually want to do a, a, yeah. a recorded video on those sometimes. I, so, I like to do it. I let's see how we can elaborate the um. I'm hoping to get a little bit more natural stones from the suppliers. Yeah. And I think that's a good time to kind of talk about it when yeah. we have a little bit more selection as well. So not we did a few like, like, like not that we want to sell, but we have some more because we haven't expanded our selection of stones much yet. Yeah. And um you don't have so many to use there, right? Yeah. So I, I think it's a good idea to um Get a little bit more collection into our our inventory, so as the uh, my kind of uh, sharpening inventory, and uh, see see how it goes. Because that's because I wanna I wanna test out some other stones as well. I may just yeah, have to cool. other stores to steal some stuff. Because natural stones are so unique that the Calgary store, like our store in Calgary, has a few get kicking around, and. Um, I don't have those stones right here, but I would like to use those. And yeah, so let, let's kind of 
you know, do that. Yeah. Sort of in- my, my, I guess my question to blank blank would be, what do you want to see? What do you want to learn about Japanese natural stones? Because we did, I think that episode we did, what, a month ago was a good overview, like kind of talking about basics. Um, but there's a lot of topics to know, right? Are you, do you want to learn about finishing the, 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 the metal of the knife with the natural stone? Do you want to know about sharpening the edge? Like, yeah, the more we know what you want, the better we can, we can make it. So we're almost at 6 p.m., guys, uh, which means it's time for Naoto and I to go home and have a few drinks. Um, but uh, if you got a few more questions, just pop them in the comments. We've got a couple minutes left. Uh, in the meantime, uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, we've got uh, Sharp Knives Rock, our new show, launching on Monday, uh, 3 p.m. Mountain Time, April 19th. I know I've said it like 17 times today, but... It's going to be a lot of fun. We've had a ton of fun making it, and I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. So if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Please like this video. It really helps us continue to do this for our jobs. Um, we've had a few questions about it. So the Knife for a Garage Sale is uh, April, or sorry, May 17th to the 24th. That's Monday to Monday. Uh, and that's when we bring in all sorts of unusual knives and knives from small makers and one-of-a-kinds and that kind of thing. Uh, new knife makers like that. We have like, well, I'm just going to bring one example. Oh, yeah, one to show off. Awesome. Very, very new knife maker that uh, not many people know about. Where are you? Well, now just grabbing that, I'm going to blast to the last of the news here. Um, <clears throat> Japanese Knife 101 on Tuesday, our regular Tuesday show. This week, they've got a special guest, a uh, chef named Tarek from uh, Gong Fu Bao in uh, Ottawa. He's going to be talking about his knife kit, showing it off, as well as talking about some of the struggles that they've been going through in the restaurant industry. Um, speaking of which, it's a tough time for restaurants. It is, uh, you know, things are tough in in all of the provinces we have stores in. In Canada, dining rooms are closed, and uh, a lot of these cooks and chefs are out of work. So if you are a chef or a cook, you work in the industry in Calgary, Edmonton, Ottawa, or Vancouver, walk yourself down to Knifeware and bring your knives and we'll sharpen them for free. We might have to take them in kind of a couple at a time because we're getting quite busy with this, but uh, we will absolutely do you up some free sharpening so you can, you know, get back on your feet, get back to work with with uh, your tools properly tuned up. They don't, have to, they don't have to live in that city though too, right? Right. Yep. Like uh, you know, we're, we're, just, we're just doing it in, in the cities we have stores in. Yeah. So if you're in Montreal, willing to don't travel too much, but if you're willing to, you know, do a little bit of um things, go yep. there. Yeah. Um. Here is the uh, is a knife. One of the brand newish blacksmiths from this region uh, in Kumamoto, you know where Kumamoto is, where the uh, Moritaka-san is from. Yeah. That particular region has very rich history of blacksmithing. And there is a very um, good blacksmith, kitchen knife blacksmith called Nishida-san. He, this guy here, Sakai-san from that same region, was working for an apprentice under a Nishida-san, and he just started his own workshop. And like a lot of blacksmiths in that region, like uh, Nishida-san, he likes to forge weld everything in the house. No cladding steel, he just, no, no, basically like the pre-clad steel, he buys, like he buys the core steel and laminates them in the house, or carbon steel. And it's got the Hinokuni, which is the uh, different name for Kumamoto, fire country of fire. Because Kumamoto is very famous for its a uh, um, for its uh, volcano. And oh. it's for Hinokuni. Cool. That's a really cool looking knife. I'm gonna definitely take a look at that in person when I'm at the warehouse. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of those like you know. Knives that people don't know about, and we wanted to bring those as well, right? So cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, awesome. thanks for tuning in, everyone. Um, we got a bit of elaboration there from Blank Blank about what what we could talk about with natural stones, different polishing results, different edges you can achieve with them, stones mm -hmm. with different hardnesses. So we'll definitely we'll definitely do some more natural stone info in the next month or yeah. so. Um, I'm gonna I'm just gonna say it again. Monday, 3 p.m. Mountain Time, this coming Monday. It's called Sharp Knives Rock. It's our new show. 
We've got a lot of really cool stuff that's going to be on it. Great videos uh, and and other things too. And somebody's going to drink water uh, coffee made with sharpening water. So even if you don't give a shit about everything else, just tune in for that. It's going to be yeah. awesome. Um, thanks everybody for watching. You got, you got anything you. else? Uh, no, it was good. The uh, well, please like the video, subscribe again. Don't miss the uh, video on. Uh, live stream on Monday. I am very excited about that. So we'll see you guys there and hopefully you guys all have a great weekend. Yeah. And your boy Naoto is going to be on, on, on Friday or on Monday too. So for all of you Naoto fans out there, he will yeah. be there. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, yeah have a great weekend. Bye. everyone. Thanks yeah. for tuning in. Thanks. Bye.